Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife Melissa and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald and this is Curiosity. I'm home, honey. Hey guys, and welcome to today's episode. I thought I would do one of my episodes where I show you some of the stuff that's been coming through the store. Now, today has been a day like most others where I, I come in and I sit in the shop and then people just walk in with boxes of stuff. But there was a few more interesting things than usual that showed up. So we're going to show you what's come in. First item that I got in was called the Magic or the Amazing Magic Robot. It is a board game from about 1953, and I picked it up because the graphics are just so cool on it. Look at that. Those kids are just amazed, and the robot, robot looks like he's, well, it looks like he's visually impaired, but he's not. He's fortune-telling. He's mystical. Now, this one is complete other than the fact that it's missing the little wire that would move and give you your fortune. Um, really fun toy. Mainly got it for the, the cardboard box because that's just going to look so cool. I would almost even frame that. Really, really neat piece. And um, as you start getting things that are robot related, there's all sorts of people who collect robots and, and old tin toys, but that's a, that's a good backdrop if you collect it. There was also some other tins that came in. This being an early Macintosh toffee tin. Not too exciting, you know, just a nice quality oval shaped little tin. People buy these, put their collectibles and things in. That wasn't the one that caught my eye. The one that caught my eye was this. Boiled mutton. <laughs> now, if you were out on the range over 100 years ago, this might have been all you had to eat. Doesn't that look appetizing? They don't even show it like in its sandwich form or however you'd eat it. They just show, you know, the sheep. But this side's more exciting. It's a cowboy lassoing a, a, a steer. But yeah, range canning company, boiled mutton, original paper label, and in excellent condition. That's just a fun piece, and I think that looked great on any shelf. This was a fun piece too. Again, I bought it because of the graphics. You can see it is a diving mask and it is inside there. I just love the graphics on it. You can kind of tell its age. It doesn't have a barcode on it. So it's going to be probably 1950s somewhere in there. But the, the great thing about it is that it's still like new, never used. So if a person needs a uh, old school diving mask, there's one that's essentially brand new. This person was a scuba diver, which is a rare thing to find here in the prairies. And so they collected some scuba diving looking things, but this is a this is a sealer for your radiator for a car, circa 1940s or 50s. Um, very collectible can because of that graphic on it, and it's completely full, it's never been used. He probably bought it at the time when he was scuba diving, thinking it was just a fun thing to put on a shelf, and now all these years later, it's become actually more valuable than the diving mask itself. A um, little can like that is really cool and collectible and a little bit of polish and care that'll come up looking fantastic. There was lots of little catalogs too like this for the Canadian Tire Corporation from 1942. It's the onset of World War II so they've got a serviceman there and look he's using the muffler for a different reason. He's muffling grandpa's snores and they're laughing about it. <laughs> uh, but fun fun thing and you know you don't get to see these old catalogs from car companies too often and we look inside jack canuck says cars must last longer and there's jack canuck right there really really fun to go through these and see how much things cost um i think i saw in here they had car tires for just a few dollars yeah there you go eight dollars for a car tire yeah you know all things considered that's probably you know fairly expensive back in the day but neat little thing if you're an automotive enthusiast and there was a few automotive flyers and catalogs in here too, which I will get to. You think right after World War II, uh, a lot of people were really big into their Jeeps. They thought they were fantastic vehicles. So Willie's introduced the truck. So you've got the flyers, original brochures for the completely new Jeep. And guess what? It looks exactly like the completely old Jeep. And they kept this style all the way up through pretty much the 1960s, but this would be just after World War II and uh, people had a great affection for their army jeeps and that's just in pristine condition there's a few jeep flyers you can see this one's from modern motors limited here in edmonton which no longer exists anymore but for someone who collects willie's jeeps or jeeps that's a really fun thing to have uh, also if you're into volkswagen beetles or buses this was kind of cool too this is a flyer but it's specific to the volkswagen vans that were the cargo van or the truck 
And this would have been if you were interested in buying the van, the dealership would have given you this to try and persuade you to, to take the actual vehicle home. But now if you've got that van and you want to kind of complete your collection or take it to a car show, it's nice to have these little brochures with them. So all those little things like this are going to find a good home with somebody who's got that vehicle, um, make a good, uh, good addition to their collection. This is a little camper made by Tonka, probably from the 1970s. Somebody's got a little Tonka truck and they want to pull something fun behind it. That's a neat little piece to have. Not worth a whole lot, but helps complete a collection. And those sorts of things do sell. Got some cool postcards here. These are from the Edmonton area. And you can see Coronation Parade in Edmonton. And this is the, I think, the Duke of Connaught. If I didn't say that right, I apologize. Uh, 1912. This looks like a Valentine's Day card. Maybe a funny one. I'm wearing my heart away for you, Louise. Look, he's got a picture of Louise on the wall and he's, uh, looks like he's <laughs> grinding his shoes. That's funny. Did you have a swell time? And there's bees chasing the guy across the field. He doesn't look like he had a swell time at all. So funny, probably turn of the century joke cards. And then you've got other ones that are somewhat more historic. There's an early one of Jasper Avenue here in Edmonton, my hometown. And that is from, it looks like almost the 1901. That's very, very early when we were, you know, early gold rush sort of town. Here's an interesting one of Bismarck. Now from a distance, you'd just say that looks like a photograph or a painting. It's marked Bismarck. But when you look really close, you can see that the ear is in fact a lady with her, um, with her gown flowing. And the eyeball is a man leaning forward with a hat on. Everything is actually something else. It's a composite made of many different types of images that form this. His helmet is a uh, horse and carriage. Very, very neat kind of piece. Oh, and there's kind of a another one too. It looks like a skull, but as you get closer, you see it's just two ladies chatting. And then the farther away you go, you can see that it's a skull. It pretty neat, actually. These... Uh, Novelty sort of postcards were pretty interesting. And there's a few of them. Looks like they got a couple of the skull. And yeah, just really fun. And you get to learn a lot about our history and, and see what was happening around our town and specifically nice to find stuff that's from our local area here. You can see what buildings exist. And actually the, the fellow that brought these in to me, they owned the property across the street from my store and they brought in a picture of my store in the background, which I'll throw into the video right here. It's very, very cool to find a piece of our history. So, pretty nifty. Some nice photographs, some early Edmonton history for me to go through. And there was another envelope here, and I don't think it was postcards. We're gonna empty it out and have a look and see what there is. These appear to be sort of mail away star cards. Cowboys, Gene Autry was a big sensation. Buster Crab, Natalie Wood, Jimmy Stewart. And these would be probably from, I'd say the 1940s or so. Gene Kelly, lots of great, uh, there's Audie Murphy, Cesar Romero. So you would have collected these, maybe sent away. You can see Deluxe Photo Service. This is probably the original package that you mailed away to. Deluxe Photo Service in New York, New York. So you probably sent away some money. And what year is this? 1959. Well, maybe that's right. Um, and it was sent to these people. And you get your little package of cards. That's pretty cool. I was a little off on the age there. But yeah, these, maybe 1959, that would make sense. Jack Palance in there. I actually worked with Jack Palance on a movie before. He sure acted for a long time. Fun little assortment. But I haven't showed you one of the cooler things, which is right underneath us. The other thing that I didn't really show is that I got some uh, Catholic artifacts. Of course, there's a crucifix. There's a picture from St. Albert, Alberta, and that is Father Lacombe right in the middle there, who was a missionary and really one of Alberta's founding fathers. And uh, that's quite an old picture, I think around 1900 or 1909, somewhere in there. And those steps must have been built really, really well. because It's holding a lot of people. Um, interesting piece of local history. Uh, but this came in too. And this is kind of surprising because it's a lot older than some of these items. This is 1909. That's over 100 years old. This is a whole lot older. 
This is a book, and in Italian, it says that uh, this book was purchased, and I believe that's probably the person's name, um, in the year 1740. So this book was purchased in 1740. This was an old book when it was purchased, and this is, I'll get to the page here, you can see it's got these beautiful sort of woodcut uh, plates in here. It's in Latin, um, but it is um, basically a hymn book, uh, the hymns of Joseph. And you can see Joseph is written with an I, it's in Latin. Uh, this book dates to the year 1005 in the account, so 5, 6, 7, 17, uh, this is around 1712. I can't remember what the J is. This book was made, I think, around 1710 to 1712. I'll have to double check what the J is. It's an old book, either way. Um, you know, you don't often have books of this age walking through your store. And it's massive, too. It's almost, well, I would say it's about a foot and a half tall um, and, and about a foot wide. This would have been the main hymn book that would have been inside of a fairly major church at that time. And it's just impressive to me that this book is still so crisp and white and clean. Um, but you can tell from the way that it's printed and the type of paper that it is, that it's just a really well kept uh, book. And I imagine being, if this was in a church for years and years, it would have been kept in very good condition. Oh, you really don't expect to see something of this age coming through. And you can kind of see a little bit where the ink, the impression has worn on the paper. And there's a little bit of foxing and a little bit of discoloration. But overall, this book is in fantastic, fantastic condition. Um, so there's, you know, the actual hymns and masses are in here as well. Um, so the, the music notes I saw on one of the pages, which of course I can't get to right now, um, is in the book. So it's, it's complete all these beautiful images and um yeah lady walked in with it in a shoe box so you never know what somebody's gonna walk in with the shoe box for um i don't think it's ever been rebound either i mean to me that looks like it's the original binding very very interesting piece i will admit and uh, it's exciting to have something old like this walk through the doors now a book like this uh can be worth several thousand dollars to the right collector the right person um, certainly fortunate to have it walk through our doors today and really a fun piece. Here's a sample of how some of the music was written. You can see that it's just basically blocks up and down for the scales. Very, very interesting uh, how they did that. Most of the music is at the back of the book, it seems. And then the front has, uh, see there's some more. Sabato Sancto. I imagine this, uh, sung in a choir at the time, you know, three, four hundred years ago would have been quite the thing to hear. I was impressed by the fact that I believe that this is the original binding that's had some repairs over the years. And you can see that uh, sort of twisted rope that they would have used to create that spine. And that's all pretty well intact. I mean, there's not a lot of loose pages or anything in here. Really, really neat piece. Well, that's it another day and just in time too we're having a bit of a snowstorm so i checked out early when i get back in the store tomorrow i am going to put all the new fun things that i got away and take a bunch of other stuff into auction as i rotate my inventory and uh, try and move things along and that is the key in this business you don't want to sit on things for too long otherwise your store becomes stale and that's no fun for anybody but thanks again for watching today guys if you haven't already don't forget to hit that subscribe button uh, check us out on Instagram at Curiosity Inc. Y-E-G and on Facebook under Curiosity Incorporated. We'll see you all soon and bye for now.